Hello there and welcome to the Weather Studio Live. We are live here at the Met Office HQ and my name is Claire Nazir. I'm Ada McGiven, a meteorologist here at the Met Office and coming up today we're going to be talking about some incredible cloud formations spotted over central parts of England at the end of last week. We're going to be attempting to explain how those formations were formed and it's not an easy one, this one. So we'll be taking a look at that and Claire I've got a cloud quiz for Aidan. Mm, we're going to test his knowledge. And he's very good at the meteorological minutiae. So we'll be seeing how, if he can raise his game when it comes to wow. Latin cloud formations. You've built me up now, so yes. the, uh, the pressure's on. But uh, we'll also be talking about the rest of summer. Not long to go now. Will it be a record breaker, or is it going to turn much cooler over the next few days? We'll be taking a look at that. But first, mm -hmm. we are heading towards the peak of the hurricane season. And we've seen plenty of activity during recent mm -hmm. months, not necessarily in the Atlantic, but the Pacific. Yes, in the Pacific, we've seen a number of hurricanes. It's been record breaking in some respects. Uh, we hear a lot more, don't we, about the tropical Atlantic waters where they form, because actually a lot of the mainland US and the Caribbean islands are in the firing line for those storms. Not the case in the Pacific. They tend to go into open waters and dissipate mm. as the waters mm. get cooler. But that wasn't the case over the last week. We have seen an absolute beast develop across the eastern Pacific Basin. This is Hurricane Lane. It's yep. absolutely huge. And this it's came from five. the International Space Station. Mm. Incredible imagery there showing Hurricane Lane last week when it was a Category 5 hurricane. Yeah. So it's been a very busy hurricane season across the eastern Pacific Basin. They've had a number of named hurricanes and actually two major hurricanes. So we had Aletta and Bud. They were both Cat 4s in June. So unusual to see such activity in June. And then July was a little bit quieter, but come the beginning of August, we saw another Cat 4 in the form of Hector. Now, this time last year, we were talking about Hurricane Harvey, which ended up being one of the, well, the wettest hurricane ever to make landfall across US soils. And yes, Hurricane Hector was a Cat 4. Now, the reason why we've seen, seen so much activity across this part of the world, well, two things in particular, sea surface temperatures, which tend to fuel these hurricanes, has been, well, a lot higher than average. So average sea surface temperatures around this time of year, around 26, 28 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty much where we're at when it comes to hurricane formation. But the anomalies this year have been four or five degrees above that. So there's a lot of energy in the atmosphere, particularly across this part of the world. Not only that, weak wind shear. Mm. So last year when we talked about the hurricane season across the tropical Atlantic, wind shear became very weak during August and September. And that's where we saw so many hurricanes one after another. Well, it's the Eastern Pacific's turn this time, and that's why we've seen this beast push right across and close to uh, the Hawaiian Islands. Take a look at this. This was a NOAA Hurricane Hunter plane that flew into the eye wall of mm. Hurricane uh, Lane at the end of last week, uh, or the, the, around the middle of last week on August the 21st. And this is just incredible. As this Hurricane Hunter moves in, now they sent out two hurricane hunters last week. One uh, Gulfstream 4 aircraft, nicknamed Gonzo, and this one, a Lockheed Orion aircraft, nicknamed Kermit. They're all called after Muppets mm. for some reason. Uh, so this is Kermit, and whilst Gonzo sampled the wind's steering lane, Kermit flew directly into the eye wall of lane. And what you can see here, as the view opens up, as Kermit enters the eye wall, are the surrounding clouds, these cumulonimbus thunderstorm clouds and mammatus clouds that create something called a stadium effect. So it, it does look like a stadium, doesn't it? The surrounding eye wall. And uh, as you peer down beneath the eye, you can see the clouds part, and there's the ocean, the Pacific Ocean below. Some incredible footage here. And uh, this sample, this Hurricane Hunter sampled sustained winds of 160 miles an hour early on the 22nd of August. So Hurricane Lane was categorized at that time as a Cat 5 hurricane. And it was the winds that initially brought uh, problems, wasn't yeah, it? It did. So as it pushed towards Hawaii, it, it lost some of its strength. Uh, the winds that affected Hawaii, Hawaii as it moved towards the north 
it was categorised as a Cat 3, but even so, wind speeds were in excess of 100 miles an hour, and that caused a huge amount of problems, particularly across Maui, where we saw a lot of power lines down, and that caused these fires. So the air had been very dry. 300 acres of land were on fire. Thousands of people were evacuated, and it was really quite a very, very terrifying situation with the combination of the wind and the smoke and the, the inferno which was just raging across these parts. But that wasn't the end of the story, was it? No, then the rain arrived and it was Big Island that was impacted worst by the rain. So just to put this into context, this is what Rainbow Falls on Big Island normally looks like. And this is it in comparison with the deluge that we saw following Hurricane Lane. So this is Rainbow Falls, Rainbow Falls in Hilo, and you can just see that sounds are gushing from that incredible yeah. amount of rainfall. Hilo had 37 inches of rainfall between midnight Wednesday and midnight Saturday. That's a four day record for Hilo. And uh, that rainfall, of course, caused flash flooding, mudslides as well. And Hurricane Lane ended up being the third wettest tropical storm to hit the US. So these are the Wettest tropical cyclones on record in the US. Hurricane Harvey only last year, 60, almost 61 inches of rainfall. And that the problem with Harvey what, arrived into Texas and then just weakened and stalled for days and re-entered the sea and then went back into Texas. So a huge amount of rainfall there. Hurricane Hiki also impacted Hawaii back in 1950. So Hawaii's seen the second and third uh, wettest tropical cyclones on record and of course Hurricane Lane there just over 51 inches of rainfall so uh, incredible um, statistics there but so Hurricane Lane of course all over now it's now weakened into a tropical storm well out of the way of Hawaii and you can see the moment that wind shear increases so the wind shear is where you get uh, different wind speeds or different wind directions at different heights just tearing the storm apart and you can see that happening quite quickly at the end of last week and uh, it went from a category three hurricane to a category one and then a tropical storm in in 24 hours or so you can see this loop here incredible satellite imagery just tearing that uh, hurricane apart there are two actually lining up as well in the East Pacific Basin we've got Hurricane Miriam and another disturbance developing as well obviously we'll keep you posted but as we said, there's not a lot of land across those part, that part of the ocean. So Hawaii's had, well, not a direct hit, but a huge amount of problems relative to that landslides, flooding, and also those fires. And obviously Miriam, Miriam is on its way. At the moment, it's not likely to affect Hawaii. But no. we've had some quite dramatic weather back at home, haven't we, as well? We had a lot of rain on Sunday and some quite spectacular cloud formations as well. Well, uh, Louis Bonner asks, is Lane going to hit the UK? No is the short answer. Mm -hmm. It's in the Pacific, well out of the way of the UK. Often we get Atlantic hurricanes that form and we get their remnants effect in the UK. So no chance of that happening. And actually, because Atlantic hurricane activity has been so low this summer, uh, we've not had yeah. many of those systems affect in the UK. And in a way, that has helped to keep us in the more settled weather for longer, yeah. I, I suspect, than we'd normally see because of those uh, Atlantic hurricanes disrupting weather patterns in our parts of the world. But yeah, we've still s mm. seen our fair share of interesting uh, weather happen over the last week or so. In particular, these cloud formations, West Oxfordshire. That is just stunning, isn't it? It really is. But well, there's been some debate about how these clouds have actually formed. So should we bring in our guest? Well, let's, let's bring in the man who can clear it all up for us. Uh, because at first sight, Hi, you might call these Cloud streaks, cloud streets, streets, I should say. This is Luke Mile. He's a media operational forecaster here at the Met Office. Hi, hello. And you've been taking a close look at these clouds. We have, you? yes. So uh, we are barking up the wrong street when it comes to cloud streets right. on this one. <laughs> Often we look at that and you do think they look like cloud streets. Now cloud streets is where you've got the wind flowing in the same direction as the cloud and you've also got subsidence, i.e. dry air, sinking aloft. So what that does is it allows these kind of lines of cloud to form, basically. Mm. And we look at that and actually, yeah, based on that very simple explanation, you think that looks like a cloud street. So cloud streets but are not. typically cumulus, strata yes. cumulus clouds that line up in rows like this yeah, that's it. and cumulus and strata cumulus clouds of course they're quite 
low in the atmosphere. They are a couple of thousand feet, feet yeah. yeah. But these are much higher, and you can kind of see that on that chart, but it's more obvious on the satellite imagery. So, so this is the infrared satellite. This is the infrared. The UK. This is a zoomed in picture here. Yeah, so the infrared satellite imagery is basically a temperature map. The colder that the clouds are, the brighter they are, and you can see they're very clearly identified yeah, here. Yeah, really bright white, lines. which would suggest they're quite high in they're the sky, high. not necessarily cumulus. These less bright clouds, they're Probably a bit lower, probably be strata a bit lower. but these are much brighter, aren't they? Yeah. So what we've got here is this on Thursday. This is the frontal zone that we had that cleared its way down to the southeast. Got a legacy of cloud here, not quite as high as this cloud, but still a legacy of medium level clouds, mm. some outer cumulus type cloud. Mm. What we've got is the change in the wind direction behind this weather front. So the wind coming down from the northwest, a cloud running sort of southwest to northeast. And it's actually a wave cloud that ah. has formed. So not cloud streets, a wave cloud, probably because of the Welsh mountains that's given that kind of element of lifting as the air's coming. It's like rolling the of the air. Rolling the air, absolutely. So this is further evidence that the clouds were actually higher than you'd see with cloud streets. Yeah. Now this funny looking plot here, this is a, a cloud based recorder, isn't it? Yeah. So what have we got at the bottom here? We've got the time here, so, so this is 24 hours. This is for Lark Hill as well, which mm. is where one of the places where we saw those clouds. Mm. So we talked about that frontal zone just a moment ago. This is the warm front, very low cloud, drizzly conditions. As that cleared through, a bit of an improvement in the height of the so cloud. So the black things here, this is the cloud, isn't it? And you've That's got the it. height up here. Yeah. So around here, this is 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 feet. Yeah. And the black here, you can see the cloud quite low during the warm Very low here that went through. with this trace. A bit of an improvement in conditions. But then this is the cold front. So we had heavy rain. Again, some quite low cloud. But then once that cleared through, much a real higher. improvement in conditions, mm. much higher cloud. So as I said just now, that legacy of cloud, and it's this that we're looking at around about um, Thursday evening, just as we headed into the early hours of Friday, we had these clouds coming in around about 16,000 yeah. feet. So we definitely know it's not cumulus cloud. It's much nothing, higher. Nothing it's, down below. Yeah, that's it. It's an outer cumulus um, type cloud, which is often... Um, when we get wave clouds, we talk about lenticularis. It's a similar type of cloud to that, but obviously it's formed in these lines because there was just enough cloud and enough of that uh, sort of perpendicular wind direction to help form that. So, so looking at the picture again, it, it does look a bit too high to be stratocumulus or cumulus. It looks yeah. a bit too low to be that wispy cirrus. Cirrus, yeah. So it's, it's fairly thick, but yeah, halter cumulus makes sense there, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's just a real dramatic shot, isn't it? You can see the stars mm. as well, the sun sunrise it's absolutely beautiful it really is and well done to the person who took that because yeah. that is a dramatic picture and it means mm. you know it, it's science in action isn't it you can look at that and go how was that formed mm. and then obviously the jury's out and we just have to look at different elements to come up with a consensus piecing all the evidence together and coming up with uh, a solution there it's really interesting how that that can come together that was taken by mark bentley uh, pebble monkey there you can see and uh, yeah, like Luke, you were saying, where the cloud is rising, where the mm. air is rising, I should say, that's where you get the cloud, and then it, where it's mm. descending again. Descending, so it's yeah. just waving cloud, uh, waving yeah. air up and down, up and down from the. And that's a really good shot. I think that's probably taken with some sort of fisheye lens, and you can really see the whole kind of scape of the yeah. sky there. So Incredible. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, let's test you on a few more clouds. We've got four clouds. We're going to ask these two boys to see. You can leave now while it's no, no, safe. No, 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 he's going to stay and help you. <laughs> okay. Yes, right. he I is. Need the help. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's just look at the first cloud. Okay. We'd like to press the button. Yeah. So this is the first cloud. What is that? Now that is, I mean, it's gorgeous, isn't it? And again, you can have a sense that there's a real sort of undulation in the atmosphere. Yeah. What's it called? Well, it looks like a load of horse heads, doesn't yeah. it? A lot of waves, crests. Yeah. Quite unusual, actually. I've seen a few of those across the Yorkshire skies. I've been driving to work early morning. Yeah. Quite a dramatic sort of scene as well, isn't it? What are they called? Calvin Helmholtz clouds. Yes, they well are. Done. Calvin yeah, Helmholtz. Well, 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 yes, well, that's right. I, I, I was going to jump in there with my answer, but I thought I'll yeah. let Luke have a, <laughs> have a shot. It's only fair. <laughs> and that was all to do with the fact the wind changes direction with height. It's again, it's down to wind shear, which we talked yeah. about earlier. Yeah. And so you do see it in, our, in this country quite a lot. But yeah. when the clouds tell us exactly what's happening in the upper atmosphere, it's a great visual sign, isn't it? What's happening it with the winds. Okay, what's this one? We talked about these already, actually. 
Uh, this looks like a lenticularis yeah. cloud. Mm. Uh, so you can see this sort of flat disk shape and, and almost looking like a UFO. A lot of uh, UFO Often sightings occur UFO, yeah. <laughs> where you get these types of clouds and they happen uh, similar to those waving clouds, don't they, where yeah. you're downwind of a mountain range and the the wind just just bounces off the mountains. So uh, yeah, I think that's so. It. The wind get, can be quite gusty at lower levels, and then mm. the air is pushed upwards. And pilots don't like to fly into these because it can be a bit gusty. Mm. There's some yeah. stable air associated with it as well, and they are quite dramatic. You see quite a lot of them in this country, where particularly across peak districts and mountains yeah. of Scotland. We've got a lot of mountains and a lot of interesting topography mm. here in the UK, mm. so we often see yeah. these yeah. unusual clouds. I love these. These different. are beautiful, aren't they? They really are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's the Latin name for these? These are mammatus clouds, mm. which uh, are usually formed in and around thunderstorms where you've got rapid descending air because you've got the rapid updrafts elsewhere in the cloud. It's got to come back down again. And these little globules, if you like, are allowing, uh, allowing that to... They look like udders, don't they? That's they do, yeah. Mammary yeah. glands, uh, yeah. That's where the Latin word mamma comes mm -hmm. from. Yeah. And they are quite associated with quite severe thunderstorms yeah. as well, yeah. when the air is so dense and so cold, and you get that, that sort of downdrafts. Last one. Oh, this is a beautiful one. This is yeah. a new type of cloud. It is. Just been named. OK, that would be the... Um, ah, what's it called? Asperatus. Asperatus, yes. yeah, that's the one. And we, the jury's out about how these actually form, mm. but they are beautiful. And some have said they are again associated with severe weather events. Severe storms, and yeah. sometimes with the Mamatus clouds as well, but they have been spotted during calmer conditions. Do you know what these look like when you've got a time lapse? It looks like you're underneath the sea and you've got waves crashing above you. Yeah, exactly. It's a very similar mm. uh, wind flow. Pattern it's essentially strata cumulus cloud, isn't it, for the height? So it's not that high in the atmosphere, but it can be a little bit higher, sort of strata cumulus, outer cumulus level. Yeah. But yes, you get these kind of undulations. And in fact, all of these clouds and many more on our website, Met Office website, um, with a nice explainer on each. So yeah, some really good ones in there, including funnel clouds uh, and barrier clouds, etc. So if you love your clouds, check out that page of our website. Luke, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, thank Cheers. You. So yeah, a bit, a bit about clouds. We love cloud spotting. In fact, the part of the Met Office is all about observations. A lot of people, I trained as an observer before mm. I became a forecaster. I did as well. yep. So you have to look at the clouds night and day, check out what the height they are, what type of cloud they are, and they're obviously indicative about what weather we're just about to have. Well, it's one of the best ways to learn yeah. meteorology is just to look outside and see the weather coming at you and the different clouds mm. build or, or disperse during the day. Uh, but we've had a couple of questions come in. Yeah. A lot of questions about cold winters. Sefa uh, Crow asks, does a hot summer mean a cold winter? Not necessarily. It's a tricky one. I mean, mm. we've had a hot summer because we had a real blocking pattern, and that's why we had a cold winter mm. before it. So if the blocking pattern continues, then perhaps, but things can change because yeah. we are on the periphery of the, the settled weather towards the east and those Atlantic weather systems coming in from the southwest. And in fact, Iceland's had worse weather this summer than we've had. We've had lovely weather. Uh, but what's going to happen over the next few days? Well, it looks likely that high pressure will start to return to our shores, although it may be a a, a stuttering start to that high pressure because th this is a, a look ahead to Friday so that you can see high pressure there over the UK but you can still see weather fronts out to the west and what that high pressure means at the end of the week of course there'll be some warm sunshine by day and uh, that high pressure builds in from relatively cool air to the northwest so we're going to see a cold front crossing if I just skip ahead to the next graphic there we're going to see a cold front uh, crossing the country over the next couple of days. That will introduce fresher air, and then high pressure will build in uh, behind that front. And, uh, of course, that means that, yes, it will be sunnier. There will be some warmth in that sunshine, but with clearer mm. skies at night and that relatively cool air, we will have some chilly nights, some grass frost, some ground frost, even some air frosts in some of those. So if you're camping over the next few days and not all kids have gone back to school yet, I know they have in Scotland, but certainly across England and Wales and Northern Ireland, if you are out and about, early mornings are going to be a bit parky. Mm. And in fact, temperatures through uh, Friday morning, early as of Friday morning, could be as low as four or five degrees Celsius across the north or six or seven further south. So it's, going to, it's a bit of a shock to the system, isn't it, after such sort of very muggy nights through the last Here's few months. Here's that cold front crossing, and it crosses from the west. So it's the west that will be coldest on uh, 
Thursday morning. By Friday morning, that colder air will be across eastern areas. So some chilly mornings, certainly, mm -hmm. but warm sunshine by day. Now, this is skipping ahead to the weekend, and there are some complications into the weekend because a weather front moves in across central areas, a bit more cloud, some patchy rainfall, uncertainties over these weather fronts as they move in. By the time we get to Sunday, their, their exact location and so on. So likely to see some thicker cloud in the west and some rain, but further east will start to draw up warmer air, and that means fewer chilly nights into the weekend, some more warmth by day, and mid-twenties possible across mm. parts of England. So I uh, wouldn't call it heat wave, but it will turn warmer as we enter autumn, of course, which is this weekend. So the coldest nights like to be over the next few nights, and then, yeah, temperatures will recover again. But, you know, I love this time of year. It just feels a bit more autumnal, doesn't it? Comfortable nights and yeah. some lovely sunshine by day. Yeah, I, I do love a, a nice settled autumn, and, and it's uh, the settled autumns where you often get the best colours yeah. coming through. So that's, that's something to look forward to. Uh, just one or two more questions. Any severe heat to come? That's Claire Allen Mulroy. Uh, well, as Aidan said, no, warm lightly. for the weekend, particularly in more mm. southern areas, more cloud in the northwest. Of course, the nights are getting longer, so when you get these blocking high pressure systems moving in at this time of year, then you can have this uh, diurnal range. But uh, I'll be, exp or, or Alex will be exploring more of that in the 10 day trend to come mm -hmm. tomorrow, which of course you'll be able to find on the Met Office Facebook page, through our YouTube channel, and we'll keep you updated through the other usual channels as well Twitter. Instagram and of course Snapchat. But that's all for yeah. this week. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for asking your questions. Uh, do subscribe if you've not already and that means you won't miss another Weather Studio Live. Uh, we are here every Tuesday at one o'clock. And we've got three days before the end of the summer, meteorological summer, and it's still a lot to play for with temperatures and we'll keep you posted on that through this week on our social media channels. We'll be chatting about that next it's Tuesday. It's going to be a very well. close call. It's quite, it? I think it's a tenth of a degree or something yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Exciting times here at the Met Office. Bye-bye. <laughs>